Regular programming will not be seen at this time, so we may bring you the Mad Magazine TV Special. With the Automobile Manufacturer of the Year. The Academy Awards for Parents. Mad X Raving. The Odd Father. A peek behind the scenes at a hospital. And the kind of father you've learned to expect from Mad's usual gang of idiots. The Mad Magazine TV special is brought to you by... Hello there. I'm Howard K. Bluntley, speaking to you from Detroit, Michigan. We're here for another interview with people who make America great. Our guest today is Mr. Etzel Lemon, the famous industrial tycoon who was recently named as Mad's Auto Manufacturer of the Year. Hmm. Well, seeing all these new cars rolling out of the plant, I'd assume that business is very good these days, Mr. Lemon. No, business is very rotten these days. Those are last year's cars rolling back into the plant to have their mechanical defects fixed. Some layout, huh? We've got 38,000 men working on the assembly line. 15,000 engineers designing expensive new accessories. And uh, one kid who comes in after school to work on our anti-pollution device. This is the bumper section. Oh. Those men are about to attach a bumper to a car. Well, I, I had no idea a bumper was so heavy that it takes six men to carry it. Oh, no, that's not because it's so heavy. Those six men are carrying it as a safety precaution. It's so brittle, if they ever drop it, it'll shatter into a million pieces. This is our accessory department, where we design all the innovations, like uh, these power seat covers, the electric ashtrays, and the Bureau Agnew dashboard clock. I see. And uh, who needs these accessories? Who need Our dealers. How do you expect them to get rich if they can't sell at least $3,000 worth of accessories to go with every $2,000 car? And that man, I take it, is trying to make some new accessory from transistorized components? No, 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 no. He's double-checking the fine print in our new car warranty to make sure that everything that could go wrong is always the customer's fault. <laughs> Hop in, I'll take you over to the proving grounds where we're testing the prototypes of our new model. Fine. Every model prototype must successfully cover this very dangerous obstacle course. Now, the test driver starts the car at the top of that hill there and rolls it nearly 500 feet to the bottom. But, but, but I don't see any obstacles. Are you kidding? That's enough of an obstacle. If our prototype can go 500 feet without falling apart, we put it into production. Now, I'd like to show you our safety research department. Well, you've certainly got it in a beautiful building, I must... No, 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 this isn't it. This is our executive indoor golf course. Uh, safety research is over there. This is George. He's working on new safety belts. That's right. As you know, the average car has uh, two safety belts in front. Well, we've added five more belts. One runs from the dashboard to the rear window, one runs from the engine to the trunk, one runs from the roof to the floorboard, one runs... Uh, those five extra belts should really make passengers safe. Oh, who cares about passengers? We're using them to hold the car together. <laughs> Uh, what about the pollution problem, Mr. Lemon? What are you doing about exhaust fumes that foul our air? <clears throat> I'm happy to report that next year we are doing something. We are following the lead of cigarette manufacturers. Uh, you mean like putting a filter on the end of the exhaust pipe to trap the dangerous gases? No, like putting a sticker on the side of every car. Breathing in auto exhaust fumes may be hazardous to your health. Then, basically, you don't go along with Henry Ford's idea on automobile production. Who's Henry Ford? Well, uh, he discovered that by keeping the same design year after year, he could afford to sell cars for $300 each. <laughs> no wonder I never heard of him. I don't associate with commie radicals. Come on, I'll drive you home. Fine. 
I've been looking at ads for your cars, and I hate to say it, but they're misleading and deceptive. Deceptive? Did you say deceptive? Deceptive. What are well, you talking about? They say uh, your cars are durable and dependable. You just showed me your cards, and they're neither durable nor dependable. Oh, I know, but what difference does that make? Even if we made good, fast, dependable cars, who'd ever know it when there's no room for them to move anyway? I see what you mean. This is Howard K. Bluntley signing off. Mama's little snook and starling, sweetie honey baby. Fatty time is over. Time to get dry and ready for Betty bye. First, we take out the little rubber dolly. Honestly, Edna, don't you think you're spoiling that duck a little? the new trailer camp they opened up about five miles down the road. It's a heck of a lot nicer than this place. I'm moving down there. Hey, really? I'm going to. So much. Hey, 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 hey. hey. Well, there goes the neighborhood. Good Lord. Ooh, this man's been run over by a steamroller. Get him to the hospital, quick. Gentlemen, welcome to Mad's Academy Awards for parents. Here in this overstuffed, garishly decorated living room, Mr. and Mrs. Wilbur Nasal, overlooking their other three and a half uncomfortable rooms, we have gathered to honor those people whose acting performances best illustrate the time-honored and traditional concepts of parenthood. Now, the winner will receive his lovely 14-carat, solid gold-plated statuette, the Mommy. And now, on with the show! The nominees are, for Best Supporting Actress in a Teenager's Sloppy Room, Mrs. Elsie Gladbuck for her memorable performance in You're Just Impossible. What do you think I am? Your personal maid? You think all I have to do is pick up after you? Your friends should see how you keep your room. I'll bet their rooms are neat. I'll bet their rooms are clean. I'll bet their rooms... Well, their rooms are worse. Don't change the subject. It's your room that I'm talking about. For best adaptation of an original getting rid of the kid for the summer routine, Mrs. Alice Corker for her heart-rending scene in It's You We're Thinking Of. Darling, your leaving hurts us more than it hurts you. How do you think we'll feel all summer long without our little man around the house? But don't worry about us. We're happy to sacrifice so you can have a wonderful summer at camp. But what if I hate camp? You write us all about it while we're in Europe. <laughs> for best original score in the typical coming late for supper song and dance, Mrs. Hortense Inlay for her inspiring number in I Could Drop Dead for All You Care. What do you care that I sweat all day over a hot stove? You were supposed to be home half an hour ago. Instead of waltzing in late, you should get down on your hands and knees and be grateful you have such a devoted mother. Well, this is the end. For all I care, you can eat your dinner cold. What are we having for dinner? Tuna fish salad. For special effects in the You Kids Today Have No Respect for Money category, Mrs. Phyllis Freeble for her touching performance in Upset? Who's upset? You think it bothers me that you play football in your brand new suit? You think I care that it costs $65 of your father's hard-earned money? You think I'm upset that it'll take $15 or $20 to reweave it? You think I'm disturbed that you disobeyed my orders? You think I'm angry? Gee, Mom, I knew you'd understand. The winner is... 
Mrs. Richard Claus for her brilliant reversal in I Get No Help Around Here. Who do you think you are, the queen from Sheba? Is it beneath you to help with the dishes? Are you afraid you'll soil your dainty little hands? Well, from now on, everyone in this house does her share, or else she can move out. Whoopee! I'll move out! Don't you get sarcastic with me, young lady. Well, that's it, folks. As Mads Academy Awards for parents draw to a close, and the recipients and hopefuls rush for the exit so they can get home quick and start screaming and raving and carrying on, trying to qualify for next year's coveted awards, we bid you all goodbye. <laughs> Bye! can smell patients who are checking out a mile away. I guess you're right. Four of them are from another hospital. The heart patient at 413 just had a serious relapse. What happened? Well, he rang the button over his head for a nurse, and one actually showed up. Miss Fuddle, you've got the name tags on these babies all mixed up. Now we'll never know which infant is which. Don't worry. The mothers will never know either. Hey, who put a lock on this bathroom door? Bathroom doors in hospitals are not supposed to have locks. I know. They're taking all the fun out of nursing. Now how can we walk in unexpectedly and embarrass the patient? Ready to operate, Doctor. Okay, Mr. Gumbill. Now just drink this glass of whiskey and bite down on this bullet. We'll have that little old gallbladder out in a jiffy. Maybe I better check the credentials of this new anesthesiologist. How awful. If only he could have held on for another hour. Why? Is his doctor coming? No, we could have charged him for an extra day. Nice. what's the idea of allowing Mr. Fulvis to fall asleep? You know he's supposed to have the medication I prescribed at precisely 8 p.m. I I'm sorry, Doctor. I it won't happen again. Okay. Now wake him up and give him the sleeping pills. I gave the patient lunch and he threw up. Well, that's not unusual considering the food in this hospital. Uh, try feeding him intravenously. I did. And? His vein threw up. Melissa. Come on, oh. try again. Oh, Morrison. Now, this has been going on for three days now. Why can't you admit this patient? Well, he hasn't been able to tell us his Blue Cross number. But, but these charges are ridiculous. $30 for a box of monogram stationery and $250 for a donation to your new Sarah J. Fingerhut Memorial Pavilion. But, sir, one of our solicitors sold these to you right after you came up from the recovery room. I don't remember that at all. Of course you wouldn't. You were delirious at the time. How dare you charge me for a private room when my bed was in the corridor? Because yours was the only bed in the corridor. Hey, where are you going with that garbage? Hmm? I'm taking it out to dump it. Idiot! Uh, that garbage isn't garbage going out. Uh, that garbage is uh, food uh, coming in. propose a toast to Don Vito Minestrone, the biggest syndicate leader in the country. Hey, you. I'm with the Syndicate Anti-Defamation League. 
Don't you know you're not supposed to use the word syndicate in this picture? Oh, sorry, uh... How about a toast to Don Vito Minestrone, the biggest racketeer murder in the country? That's better. What a fantastic makeup job. How do they ever get him to look so old? I can't believe it's really Marlo Brandon. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's Marlo Brandon, all right. Oh, Papa, I'm so happy on my wedding day. Why aren't you happy, too? Why do you look so pained? Do you think it's easy to see a little girl grow up? Do you think it's easy to give her away to another man? Do you think it's easy to talk with eight pounds of cotton in your cheeks? Uh, what's an agenda today, Haven? There are people waiting to ask favors of you. Okay, bring them in one at a time oh. and uh, have them pay their respects to the old father. This is Mr. Bongiorno. It done a minister on the I kneel and kiss your ring. Uh, so far, so good. And I grovel at your feet. Uh, not bad. <laughs> and I lick your left shoe. Okay, now show some respect. Dear and illustrious artifact, manipulator of the world, the government, the most exalted of the personages, hallowed to be thy name. Beautiful. Now what can I do for you on this holy occasion? I want you to rub out the two lousy things. Okay. Oh, Don Minestrone, how can I ever thank you? Swear to me in your mother's grave that when I ask you for a favor, you will grant it. Mother's a grave? My mother, she isn't a dad yet. Just remember that when I ask for a favor. Now crawl out of here, others are waiting. Number two, who got number two? This is Angie Maggio. Santa Lucia! Santa Lucia! It's a miracle, a miracle. What's a miracle? I had just met the only Italian in the world who can sing. What can I do for you? There's a great part in a new movie that I want, but the producer won't give it to me. Haven, tell the producer to give Mr. Maggio the part or I break his back. Oh, thank you, Art Father. Santa Lucia! Santa Lucia! Haven, tell Mr. Maggio to stop singing or I break his mouth. I'm worried about blood, so I think there's going to be bloodshed between his family and ours. Hey, look at the big car barreling down the street. Maybe it's them. Don't worry, that's not them. Don't worry, that's not them. Now you can worry. Is he dead? Did those two hoods in the big black car gun him down? Well, not exactly. When they got within 50 feet of him, a mug who was stealing a woman's purse ran into the path of a hijacked truck going the wrong way at a one-way street which swerved into a drug push, a stolen motorcycle, and they all fell on top of him. In other words, he died of natural causes. Natural causes? In New York, that's a natural cause. Hey, wait a minute. He's not dead after all. He's trying to speak. What's he saying? It's hard to tell. He's hurt so bad he's mumbling, so I can't understand him. I got news for you. He talks like that when he's not hurt, too. How's my father, Doc? Well, he's retching, and he's gasping for breath, and he's moaning a lot. He's fighting for his life? No, he's fighting for an Oscar. It's me, Mike How you been, son? Fine, Pop. I'm engaged to a swell girl. I'm tops of my class at law school, and in my spare time, I work for United Charities. I'm sorry I asked. Oh, Pop, don't start him again. I mean, just because I believe in law and order. Get out of here with your dirty mouth! But, Pop... Get the stranger out! Bring me his son! Papa, sometimes you get me so angry, I'm afraid I won't be able to control myself. Because you know what I feel like doing right now? I feel like killing you! I feel like killing my own father! Hey, my boy's gonna be all right. Micron, with Pop in a hospital and his gang walk on on, we need you. It's time you join a family business. But, Simi, I have great aspirations. I'm going to be a governor or a senator. Listen, kid, if you want to be a big-time criminal like a governor or a senator, you got to start at the bottom and wake yourself up. We want you to meet Plotso in Charlie's restaurant. Mm -hmm. The way I see it, Micron, is if your family wants to stay healthy, you better come in on a narcotics deal. Hey, what, what, what's the matter? You look nervous. Me? Oh, no, 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 I'm not Plotso, uh, Mr. Nervous. I mean, uh... Well, what's with you, you? Now where you going, huh? Oh, I'll be right back. I just got to go to the gun room. The, the, the men's room. Uh, I mean, the... 
I almost blew it. Oh, boy, am I scared. Now, where did they stash the gun? Maybe left me a message. Hey, here's something written on the wall. Here I sit, broken-hearted. No, that's not it. Ah, got it. Okay, now all I gotta do is remember what they taught me. Walk out calmly, go up to Palazzo, shoot him twice in the head, drop the gun, and leave. That's simple enough. Be calm, be cool, and above all, don't... What happened? Some maniac came out of the men's room firing a gun. Looks like he shot everybody in the place. Everybody but Plotso. How did he get it? From complications brought on by eating too much congeli, veal, parmigiani, and lasagna. In other words, he died of natural causes. Natural causes? In an Italian restaurant, that's natural causes. Ah, it's great to have you home again, Papa. And I got good news. Micron took care of Plotso. My little boy's first killing. I'm so proud of him. Remind me to have his gun bronze. Where's he now in Sicily waiting for the heat to die down? Oh, in the bathroom, waiting for his stomach to die down. Hey, you dumb tomato, how can you save me this slop? I told you I wanted chicken tetrazzini, pepperoni, ravioli, vermicelli, manicotti. I know. But for breakfast? What's that, Kenny? Cockley beat you up again? That dirty fink, I'll kill him. Hold until I get there. What? I don't know how. Hit him over the head with a lamp or push him down the stairs. Just don't do anything rash. Why are we following Cindy? Don Minestrone suspects Carly is working for Linguini and may be setting Cindy up. So we gotta protect him and... Uh, uh-oh. Too late. Poor Cindy. Papa knew it would happen to him one of these days. Papa warned him so many times. You mean that Don was right? Those were Linguini's men in disguise? No, they were real toll collectors. Papa must have told him a thousand times, never go up to a toll booth with a $20 bill. I call this meeting of all the families because my heart is broken. My son Cindy is dead and my boy Micron has been in exile in a bathroom for six months. Now between us, we control the nation's gambling, prostitution, narcotics. Without us, this whole country would come to a standstill. I say it's time to get this country moving again. This war must end. We must stop destroying each other and start destroying us plain ordinary citizens again, like normal American businessmen. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, agreed. I got to do that, too. You only have to kiss him. You don't have to marry him. At last, there's no more war between the families. Now I can live to a ripe old age in peace. You chased me, Grandpa. Of course, they chase you, Angie, my little grandson. And then we will play some syndicate kitty games like hide and think and cops and good guys. Oh. The odd father is dead. He suffered a heart attack chasing little Angie. He was a kind man, a gentle soul, a good-hearted person and a decent human being. Did he say any last words before he died? Yeah, he wants someone to lean on the kid. Boys, with Don Minestrone dead, I'm taking over as head of all the families. Not so fast, Linguini. It's Micron Minestrone is back from the bathroom. He's beginning to act like the odd father. Now, let's get things straight. I'm in charge here. He's beginning to look like the odd father. And from now on, what I say goes. Do I make myself clear? He's even beginning to sound like the odd father. And I got plans, big plans. We're gonna make millions. He is the odd father. Now here's what we're gonna do. We're going legit. We're going into show business. We're gonna make a movie about us. Can't you just see it now? Theater owners everywhere will show it. Or else. Yeah. Critics everywhere will love it. Or else. Yeah. And people everywhere will be standing in line waiting to see it. Or else. Yeah. And it will win an Academy Award. Or else. Yeah. Now, we'll start the movie off at my sister Candy's wedding. And then what will happen? The Mad Magazine TV special has been brought to you by...
collection of trash cannot in any way, shape or form be interpreted as constructive programming.